in the backyard of a lovingly restored cottage, I meet chef Patrick Moule. He's been cooking, eating, and educating people about Cajun food for 22 years. You know, the story on the, the folklore, the folk tale, what happened was is when the Acadians left Nova Scotia, the lobster got so lonely for them that they traveled down to Louisiana to meet the Cajuns. And the trip was tough, so they lost weight. And by the time they got here, it was this size, you know? Meet Cole, our boil master. As young as he looks, he's bought a thousands of pounds of coffee. In the boiling water goes the seasoning. Plenty of cayenne, garlic, and salt. He got your corn, potatoes, mushrooms, onions, and smoked sausage going. We threw in some local crabs for good measure. But around here, it's all about the crawfish. Oh, putting on the paper, oh, this bodes well. There's a significant look of anticipation here. Oh, there is, yeah. there is. Yeah, we're about to have a ride over there, too. I know, man. Coming through. Nice. Man, you people are fast on these things. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. It's really about the heads for me. Anything that looks even remotely like that with a, something that resembles a brain, I am sucking that brain out of its head. <laughs> oh, I love that's the good stuff. The spice is right there. It's all good, man. It's all good. They're just sweet, buttery, delicious. Crawfish used to be considered trash food, a meal of last resort, a desperation meal. Woo! They were really good at adapting. They're adaptable, that's for sure. Thankfully, the early Cajuns uh, knew a away. damn good thing when they tasted it. The flavors that came out of here, it is the only really unique to American cuisine. There's something of a breeze blowing this evening, which is a good thing, because it's hot and there's work to do. <laughs> I'm Lindsay. Yeah. Hey, Lindsay, how are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you to meet you. Welcome to the neighborhood. Can we say? It's prep day for tomorrow's feast, a little get-together called a boucherie. And so everyone around here is cooking up sauce, or simply getting sauced. Doesn't really matter, because it's clearly a sound, traditional reason for a good time. <laughs> here in Cajun country, this barely qualifies as a party. This is the pre-party. Backyard, little cooking, little prep, little music. Patrick is back, this time as a guest. But it's not the professionals doing the cooking today, which is one of the amazing things about Cajun country. Nobody seems to cook professionally, but as you'll see, everybody's got a specialty. I get a big hug? Hey, I'm gonna hug. Toby's doing some of the cooking, and he's got a personal old school favorite in mind. Some churro that Donnie picked up off the road today. Mmm, roadkill. There's a show there somewhere. Yeah, Frey. Watch that turtle, watch that turtle. Turtle? Okay. I hate turtles. Why don't we kill it? Don't be seeing him no more. Whack off the head, scoop out the meat and boil, then sear, then smother till tender. What are you going for in there, inside? This is the tenderloin. Like oh, well, it's on the other right, of course. It's, it's on the other side of those that. little ribs. You gotta really want it. Yeah. yeah. Butter right here. Emma Young is making fresh corn hash. Hey, I'm almost done. I was like, you spent seven dollars on butter? This hash, and, and I wish I could give you a better sense of how sweet and toasty and delicious it is, is a mix of corn, chopped chilies, and bell pepper, a healthy hit of cayenne, and bits of tasso a heavily spiced and seasoned cured pork. You know about Tasso? Yeah. The town that it originated in came, is right up the road. Tasso. Tasso. Her husband, Lindsay, is stuffing wild wood ducks, which he bagged out there by those trees. Tomorrow, he'll be playing with his band, the Red Stick Ramblers, at the Boucherie. All right, here's the golden moment right here. Oh, God, that looks really good. So what's the plan with these things? They're stuffed with homemade sausage, venison, and pork. Oh, man. And uh, peppers and onions and stuff. And just, we call it pot roasting. You just brown the shit out of them and then make a gravy. I just keep deglazing it, uh -huh. burning it and deglazing it over and over. Right. It's basically, you're making caramel. Wow. Flavor, I think. Like this right here, that's the best stuff there. Uh-huh. Because that's like concentrate gravy mix. You know, you buy kitchen bouquets. Did you make your own? 
Well, yeah. Can you see what he's got? <laughs> little little crack jar filled with like reduction. Oh. The level of sophistication about food and cooking here is kind of awesome and shaming at the same time. Who's got cheesecloth in their house? <laughs> I don't know anybody in New York who's got cheesecloth. And I noticed also that sort of spontaneously, everybody assigns themselves a task yeah. that they're comfortable with. And that's a pretty professional looking dice going on over there. Everybody works. Everybody's done this before. Everybody seems to know what their job is. <laughs> over at the turtle station, a spirited disagreement over turtle technique. Wait, hold up, wait, hold up. Wait, hold up. Wait, Fighting words, man. Oh, difference of opinion here? We're very particular about ingredients. But consensus is quickly reached. Right, the consensus seemed to be a pretty, you, you, you give it a first boil, yeah. then, then you crisp it up, it uh, you take it out, run the liquid through a cheesecloth or a fine. Brown the turtle meat, pull it out, and start putting vegetables in. Does everybody you know cook? <laughs> it, it seems like everybody here either cooks or has a powerful opinion about the way it should be done. Oh, yeah. More men in this area cook per capita than any other area in the country. The mom is a blue collar cook. She cooks every day. Daddy cooks Christmas, holidays, stuff like that. Oh, so you get the glory dishes. Exactly. Exactly. I like it here. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. And in the spirit of cooperation and being a good guest, I pitch in in my own small way. What's he doing? Hey, Nickel. Is that a bell pepper? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Leave the seeds in? Oh, yeah. Well, that's some New York City <laughs> right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> old ways die hard. All right, yeah. finish, Chef. OK. Put it on. Yeah. Not only does everyone cook, but they make their own wine. And it ain't half bad, either. It's homemade, bro. Oh, just a that's sip. A really bad idea. <laughs> that's what I know, right? This is so, so amazing. It's so amazing. wonderful. You know what? This is and did I mention that everyone here plays an instrument? And, and they, they play multiple instruments. <laughs> Actually, everyone you see playing right now is better on something else. That's really depressing. <laughs> Night falls, when I'm not exactly sure. And soon we're eating all that good stuff that's been slow cooking all over the yard. Oh, delicious. Now, how spicy is that? She's used to it. Duvo? Un peu? You good? <laughs> Give me five, Joey B. Say Say out for the fun. Wood duck, turtle stew, corn hash, and a crawfish bisque that is the single best damn thing I've eaten since El Bui. She stuffed those heads all individually, which is pretty insane. Mmm. Oh, yeah, baby. How much, how much good do you need in one place? 